dreams till sunbeams find you. Sweet dreams that leave all worries behind you. But in your dreams, whatever they be, dream a little dream of me. Good morning. You are listening to KSQD Santa Cruz, KSquid 90.7 FM. Streaming live at ksqd.org. I am Catherine Bell, and this is The Dream Journal, a weekly show where we explore the healing powers of your nighttime dreams through conversations with dream experts and with you. And now we transition to the beautiful music of our creative musician, Rick Kleffel. He creates this music, brand new, every week that we have here in the background. And I always love listening to this music because it helps me center down and remember to be here in the present. In the words of Carl Jung, who looks outside dreams and who looks inside awakens. Thank you all for making last week's All Caller Show a rousing success. We will definitely plan for more of those shows going forward. And don't forget that you can always call in during the last 20 minutes of any show. And you can share a dream or ask a question. I'll be giving out the number to that real soon. And uh, in about 40 minutes, we'll be taking call-ins today, as usual. In the meantime, we'll have a guest, local lucid dreamer, Yame Wolfsmith. We'll be talking about her personal approach to dreaming and also about how you can bring the magical to the practical every day. And we'll also talk about dream poetry and how you can make your own. This is Catherine Bell of Experiential Dreamwork and welcome to the Dream Journal. I'd like to remind you that the views and opinions expressed in this program do not necessarily represent those of Natural Bridges Media or of KSQD staff, volunteers, or underwriters. The Dream Journal is also a podcast, which is great in case you miss part of the show, or if you'd like to binge listen to get your dream on. Look for the Dream Journal, review it, subscribe, and tell a friend. It really helps people to find the show. The Dream Journal is available on all of your major podcast platforms. So I'm working with a dream image right now where I, I had this moment. Well, so I'm p- placing my hands on the sides of my belly. This is like my Buddha belly moment here. That there's a dream that I had where I, I don't remember what happened in the part, early part of the dream. But at some point, somebody puts their hands on either side of, of my belly and, you know, Oh, I've been feeling like, is it okay for me to be a little soft these days? You know, I don't get out and exercise as much as I used to. And and also, it's just, it's always been an ongoing thing, my relationship with my belly. But in the dream, when the person puts their hands on this, my belly, I get transported into this amazing moment of bliss. And the, the, the floor suddenly tilts, and so that we're sliding sideways, and I just, like, kind of swoon in a way. And that there's just this amazing feeling of connection and bliss so as my my dream practice has been to put my hands on my belly and remind myself to be present yeah it's such a powerful part of who we are we talk about the gut instincts or you know I had a gut feeling about that and you know there's a lot of intelligence uh, there's a lot of intelligence here in our bellies that we I think a lot of times don't pay attention to for me a lot of times it's about safety but it can also be about feeling really good so I've heard that there are, is gray matter in our bellies. The same gray matter that's in our brains also exists in other parts of our bodies. And the brains is by far the greatest concentration of that gray matter, is neuronal connections. But then there's also a large amount in our heart. And then the third largest concentration is in our bellies. So is there really a communication that happens in our bellies? So I'm going to be keeping in mind what's going on. Maybe shall I say keeping in belly? What's happening with my Buddha belly? And I welcome you to the Dream Journal. 
Like every week, I will be inviting call-ins during the last 20 minutes of the show. So you could get your questions ready, maybe open up your dream journal, see if there's something you'd like to share. And you can jot down the number now. The number is 831-900-5773. That's 900-KSQD. The number again is 831-900-5773. In about half an hour, I'll be opening the phone so you can call. So we have on the air with us, Yame Wolf-Smith. Welcome. Hi, Catherine. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you fine. Thank you. Glad to have you on the show. Yay. I'm yeah. so excited to be here. I know. Me too. <laughs> Yame Wolf-Smith is a mother, a partner, an ecstatic dancer, and a lover of life. She has been a lucid dreaming for the last three years. Dreaming is not only a hobby for her, but it's a serious portal to self-empowerment, awareness, and reflection. Yame continues her to devote her relentless time and attention to knowing herself in a way that's beneficial to all beings with her whole soul and strength. One way that Yame expresses her dreams is through poetry, and she'll give us some tips on how to turn our dreams into poems, and will also share with, her, with us some of her dream creations. So, welcome to the Dream Journal, Yame. Thank you. Yeah, I wonder if you could start by telling us a little bit about yourself and, and your journey with your dreams. How did you first get interested in dreaming? Um, that's a great question. I, for as long as I can remember, I have always been really active in my dream life. Um, I think the earliest memory I have was when I was about three years old. I would have this one nightmare mm. of this purple monster chasing me. And um, I remember one night, it was so terrifying that in my dream, I turned around and I said, Hi, my name is Yame. Yeah. It's uh. nice to meet you. Uh. What's your name? Uh. And <laughs> the, like, really big purple monster it it stops and its demeanor totally change and it um it said oh my name is such and such and i'm i have no friends and i uh, would you be my friend oh. and um <laughs> from then on i think that was kind of the uh, catalyst for me starting very young into the lucid dreaming world of mm -hmm. facing my fears well, it's and, interesting. Uh, yeah, you said yeah. facing your fears. I don't know that many of us would would, would would like think to turn towards the thing that's just that's terrifying us. So it's amazing you did that, and especially how old did you say you were at such a young age? Yeah, I was yeah. Uh, three years old. Three. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's just yeah. something instinctive you to turn toward, even the scary thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. It started then, and then um, I've always been interested in my dreams. But but recently, uh, I think before then, I didn't even know that um, I was kind of dabbling in lucid dreaming mm -hmm. until maybe I moved to Santa Cruz about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I was having some trippy experiences. I, I definitely call them psychedelic mm. Um in the sense that I would, it was so interesting. Um, I was reading this book called uh, Be Here Now mm -hmm. uh, by Ram Dass. I know that one. And yeah. It's Classic. My favorite. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and everything I was reading, the spirit of what I was reading, I was experiencing firsthand in my dream world. Mm. Um, these uh, just kind of, of time bending where you know, I would, ha my dream world felt like it was 20 years and I was, it was very colorful and elaborate. And then when I'd wake up and go to my day job and my waking world felt like my day, it was so quick and it'd be like two hours. Uh -huh. And I, I remember like, what's happening? This is, this is different. So yeah. totally reality check for me. And I'd be experiencing for like three months, um, Three, like three to four times, uh, I would experience deja vu mm. consistently every day mm -hmm. for about three months. And I remember that was really trippy for me because I would have these moments where I'd be like, whoa, I've been here. 
how how do I know I've been here? And sometimes I'd have like in those deja vu moments, deja vu of deja vu. <laughs> um, oh my gosh! And wow. it was yeah, yeah, it was so um, amazing and and also a little disorienting. Sometimes. I bet. Now we've had calls yeah. from people who who are so into the dreaming, especially when they get into the lucid dreaming, that they started to have trouble telling the difference between waking life and and dreams. But it yes. sounds like you kind of kept a little bit of a balance. Like, what what, what was that like for you? Yeah, that was. Um, I remember it was really exciting, and um, just it opened up a door of possibility of. Mm. Oh, anything's possible. Um, my world is bigger and grander than I ever thought, and I'm bigger and grander than I ever thought. Right. Because um, after these experiences, it really helped me kind of go from a very one-tracked mindset to a more broader, expansive awareness of myself and others. Right. Um, well, I understand yeah. that you have a certain, they have a way of approaching lucid dreaming, which is one that you've developed on your own. I wonder if you'd like to talk a little bit about how you approach lucid dreaming and how you like integrate that in your waking life. Sure. Um, well, how I first got into lucid dreaming was by reading it. Well, I, I mean, you know, I told you that I was kind of doing it before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these experiences really uh, made me curious. And um, if I am interested in something, I am such an avid reader. Mm -hmm. So my first um, kind of mode or trick or tip that I got into is just reading all about lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just getting familiarizing myself with the vocabulary of everything dream-related. So I actually, I have like these kind of seven steps. Oh, that cool. I, okay. Yeah, reviewed Perfect. in that, that I kind of go. Um, they're very simplified. The first step was research, um, educating myself and making sure that um, I really kind of familiarize myself with the whole dreaming territory. Um, and then uh, my second step that I've uh, gone through is um, setting an intention. I feel like that's really important. Mm -hmm. And um, every night I would do this thing where I would tap my temple. My hmm. dad is a chiropractor and he taught me these kind of like uh, chiropractic pressure points um, to like uh, clear the body and the mind. And one of them is kind of using my right hand to swipe across my temple. And that somehow it works for me. Um, Swiping my temple plus the affirmation and the intention. Right. Would so be really when really you say helpful. swiping, you're 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 talking about you know the temple like just like over the side of your foreheads. So you you actually like yes. kind of just swiping forward or down or or tapping or what uh, is? Kind of like tap swiping. Tap, tap swiping. Okay. Tap swiping. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, kind of right hand to uh, left temple. Oh, so you're reaching across. Oh, interesting. So maybe mm -hmm. there's some cross uh, cross brain activity doing that. Yeah. 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 yeah and that's a little personal tip I do. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and with that said, I really make sure that um, there's this woman named Ariel Ford who uh, is really into manifesting. And I love this term that she calls when we manifest things or call in something we desire to really feel into it, not only um, just wish for it and think about it, but she uh, termed that, that feeling, feelingization. So feelingization. What oh, what a wonderful word. Yeah. yeah, it's like visualization plus feeling it in your whole body and being. So like feeling um, that like it's accomplished, like that kind of a thing, or feeling that you're yearning yeah. for it? Feeling that it's accomplished, uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, as if it's already in your life. Right. So... So instead of being like, I wish to do this, it's like, oh, I'm already doing this. I feel it in my body. So one way I would do this is just my intention for the longest time was facing my fears. Mm -hmm. So I would say, tonight, I'm already facing my fears. Or I know all of myself and they're whole and integrated. Mm -hmm. Or tonight, I'm healed. Tonight, I help others. Um, wow. 
And my current mantra has been with the whole tapping and, and um, in uh, what is intention is um, remember what I need to remember, release what no longer serves me, so that I may be more whole and integrated for the benefit of all beings. Mm. And that has been a really powerful intention for me recently. Remember what I need to remember and release all that I need to release. Is that uh, how? The- yeah, yeah, release what no longer serves. What me. no longer serves me. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and um, and with the whole intention thing, um, I'm stealing a quote from Ellen DeGeneres, mm. but she um, has this great quote around: um, "Be open to learning something new, even if it contradicts what I learned or thought was true yesterday." Uh. So, with the whole intention setting thing and and desiring something. Um, part of the lucid dream movement activity for me is really um, the epitome of that quote is learning something even if it contradicts what I thought to be true yesterday or a month ago or a year ago. Well, that's uh, that's really powerful and that's really challenging because we tend to see the world from where we're at and so to be open to things that are very different from where we're at is uh, it's is uh, I don't know uh, difficult. It's not the I don't know if that's the right word, but it's it's uh, it's not our usual thing. And I do find that dreams are extremely helpful with that, or like waking me up to oh, you thought it was this way, but actually this is not really helping you the way that you've been doing it. <laughs> like oh mm-hmm. oh, I think I'm ready for something new here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, it's been such a journey of um, vacillating between um, the state of being of being really proud of myself and then also being really humbled at the same time uh-huh. um, with uh-huh. the lucid movement. Like, I'm like, oh, I- I'm so powerful. I can do this. I can do that. I can fly. I can manipulate objects. Oh, but I also am stuck in this emotional way or uh-huh. I-, I need to forgive or I'm not as strong as I thought and I could grow in this area and uh-huh. kind of like a seesaw. Right, right. Um, Mm-hmm. And maybe we can like f- yeah. f- start to feel our own power, and but 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 like sim- simply like not in an arrogant way, but just as in like this is who I am. Like, I mean, my, I'm going back to my, my Buddha belly. There's something about that yeah. belly that's just like, oh, this is like really who I am, and it's uh, it's kind of scary that it's so simple and so powerful, but it is what it is, and and maybe. What is that? There's a Mary Williamson who says, who are you to not be your your amazing, brilliant self? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh. So, uh, we all may, yeah. we're going to take a, a short break. I'll play a little bit of music mm-hmm. that you've selected. I'm going to uh, play a piece from uh, uh, something called Flying by Creature. I guess that's how you pronounce yes. it. K-R-3-T-U-R-E. Yeah. It's a little bit of a kind of a meditation, so we can all use that to drop in, and then we'll come back and hear the rest of your seven steps. And I also want to say that in about 20 minutes, um, I'll be opening the phone and you can call in at 831-900-5773. So you might start thinking about what you'd like to share. And we will be back. This is Yame Wolf-Smith. And this is the Dream Journal on K-Squid 90.7 FM. And I am your host, Catherine Bell. So my name is Catherine Bell, and you're listening to The Dream Journal on K-Squid 90.7 FM, and we are here live with a Santa Cruz resident, Yame Wolf-Smith. Welcome back. Thanks. Yeah. So what other what other tips do you have for us for uh, for working with our for like in setting our up for a, a lucid dreaming night, or mm. even like you actually even you even said that instead of lucid dreaming you kind of prefer bringing the magical to the practical. So maybe before we go back to the steps, one maybe you want to say a little bit about what does that mean bringing the magical to the practical. Yeah, um, I I feel like that's 
been my really uh, my my whole go just my go to plan or plan is not a, the best word, but just intention of opening up um, because I feel like with the dreamscape for me it is such an like a ethereal metaphysical magical place that there's infinite possibilities Mm -hmm. and when I'm in that state um, whether it's daydreaming night dreaming um, anywhere in between those states I um, like I feel so uh, strong and powerful and and those possibilities but then when it comes to this human piece of flesh that is also mine yeah um, how do I how do I um, bring all that infinite wisdom that is kind of in the spirit realm and bring it to my human realm right. and that's been kind of my my thing that I've been exploring and having fun doing is just um, kind of un it's almost like a bridge like how do I make uh, cross that bridge between those two realms because mm-hmm. I am a human and I am a being and I'm great at the being part but now I'm trying to balance the human part, that, that part you were talking about, the Buddha belly, and mm-hmm. there's that judging mind and the one that feels things. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so, like, how do I, um, yeah, bring, bring the kind of spiritual part into my everyday practice, yeah. whether it's uh, changing a diaper every day, <laughs> ten <laughs> times a day, right. <laughs> or... You know, taking a bowel movement every morning and really enjoying that and taking that time as a moment of relief and integration of my morning um, and uh, getting groceries or just simply making my bed. Like, how do I do that with a magical flair? Right, right. It seems a bit like there's some mindfulness in here that, for me, it's really helpful to be present in the moment rather than busy off in my thoughts thinking about the future mm-hmm. or the past and so bringing myself mm-hmm. into the present is a lot a lot of how I try to uh, enhance that magic mm-hmm. in me yeah and I actually have a cool story about this about uh, bringing the magical to the practical oh yeah please share um, one time I think um, one of my first jobs in Santa Cruz when I was kind of getting really into it uh, dreaming and just noticing my superpowers in my dream realm. One of them was flight and speed. And um, I was so into that. And I was thinking, how can I bring that to my daily life? Like, I feel kind of stuck um, in my current job. And, and I hate waking up in the morning. Mm-hmm. And um, I would set a timer to wake up. And when, one day, um, I slept past my timer. And I was um, I looked at the clock and I was like, oh shoot, there's no way that I'm going to make it to work on time. Like, I'm going to be at least half an hour late. Um, and I was kind of starting to notice my heartbeat go up. I was getting really nervous and stressed. But then I had this moment where I was like, you know what? I do my five minute meditation every day. I'm going to keep doing that as if I was on time. I'm going to, mm. I'm going to, every step I take from, where I am right now out the door I'm going to act as if I'm on time Mm. even if I'm not (laughs) I'm not going to rush it and I'm not going to stress and start crying and I'm going to do this and so I kind of did that and um, I was only five minutes late (laughs) I don't know how that happened wow um, turns out everyone else was late that (laughs) day too and you were probably in a way better state of mind than if you'd been rushing and rushing exactly yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Wow, so that really is kind yeah, of like yeah. everyday magic, like to, to bring mm-hmm. the intention to every day. Mm-hmm. Like like you were mm-hmm. talking about, what is it called? Feel- feelingization? Mm-hmm. Feeling as if I'm not late, like I'm on time. This is everything perfect. Like, and I'm really feeling that in your body mm-hmm. as, yeah. as, as, as accomplished. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what are some of your other uh, ideas that you, you wanted to bring about the way that you particularly work, approach lucid dreaming and this kind of magical practical practicality? Yeah, I will, I think I shared 
one through two, and the third one really applies to the to this kind of mag, uh, magical through practical, which is uh, keeping an open, available, patient, curious mind, um, like like as if one is a child in the child state. Mm-hmm. Um, and because um, I I know I've talked to many people about my dreams, and some people have just said to me. Um, oh, I don't remember, or I, I don't, I'll never do that, or I'm not into that. And so when I hear them say that, I'm like, oh, well, have you heard what you just said? Um, you just said it started with a, like, kind of double negative type of thing. Like, um, if you really believe that, then you won't do it. So that's why you're not doing oh, it. Um, oh, I see. So you're saying that when they say, yeah. I, I don't remember my dream, like, that's an affirmation right there. I don't remember yeah, them. Exactly. <laughs> They're starting... Before they even start, they, they, they've already, uh, they're not even on the platform. Right. So, yeah. Um, so watching so our language, it seems really important to really watch what we, what our language is. And, uh, in oh, totally. Both outside the world and also inside our heads. Mm-hmm. Uh. Uh-huh. And part of the patience aspect is um, when, you know, I think it's okay to say, oh, I haven't done this. But to also include the part yet. Now, yet. someone, uh-huh. if they haven't, you know, gotten to these steps, they've done all these steps that I'm talking about or someone else has said in their book, to just simply say, oh, I haven't learned how to fly yet. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm getting there. <laughs> um, yeah, instead of end it with a period. Right. Um, oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and uh, another part is... Uh, when I, I started doing this just recently, but I think um, I used to just want to get up and jump out of my bed and be ready for the day. But part of um, integrating the dream for me is um, uh, time for reflection. So mm-hmm. in order to do that, I lay in bed for an extra 30 seconds to two minutes, mm-hmm. just laying there, seeing what comes up. Um, before I reach for my journal or before I um, get a glass of water, just stay present and mm-hmm. still. Um, mm-hmm. And then and then I can, like, incorporate anything, which leads to step number five, recording and collecting data, um, where I have this journal. And um, I, I actually do it on my cell phone because I, uh, I use the recording... Um, little piece on my cell phone and I speak into it and then it records uh, types the recording mm-hmm. for me. It's a voice to text um, function. It, yeah mm-hmm. and it's much faster than writing for me even though writing is super important but in this sense um, since I feel like I've been doing this for a long time integration is really quick for me. Mm. Um, the most important part, in my yeah. view, is just to find something that works for you. Like, what is it, something that oh, you definitely. want to do that works, it's easy, that you have ready yeah. to go by the side of your bed? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, and um, and I've been, I label sometimes what type of dream it is for me. Like, I've noticed through my collecting of my dream experiences, there's so many different types. It's not just one size fit all. Like, sometimes I have, like, premonition dreams, past life dreams, remote viewing, out of body, lucid, astral projection, spiritual, therapeutic, integrative, just crazy non-integrative dreams that just I need to sift through my brain. Um, And so just kind of building relationship with my dreams. And and, uh, when I record, I also write down what I felt and what I think my heart is wanting to tell me or my spirit is wanting to tell me through these dreams Mm -hmm. Um, because I believe that no one can interpret our dreams better than ourselves Mm -hmm. Um, even if you look it up it's (laughs) a good reference point but it's just a mirror for what we already know Um, and then for step six is just share repeat and update you know (laughs) share as much as we can find someone that is also interested in dreaming or lucid dreaming and you can like feed off of each other. I think that's really important. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, six and seven are the same. Mm. Share, repeat, update, um, <laughs> update your skills, build on everything and incorporate 
some new techniques and release the ones that don't serve me anymore. Right. So this is like an evolving yeah. practice of yours. It's something that you, you'll change as you go. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's beautiful that you really you probably incorporated that from from things that you've read and also just from your own intuition. Mhm, mhm. Yeah, and I know. Um, I think was it. I love it when authors in any like spiritual or self help or no to guide in books um, always put that little disclaimer of uh, this is what works for me and. Take it or leave it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't need to. This may not work for you, but if it resonates, then it's true. Um, but if it doesn't, then it's not, and that's good, too. So that's kind of my approach to learning and personal growth. Right. Well, dreams are incredibly personal, and that's one way that they're they're somehow different from a medical science, whereas bodies are all have a lot in common with each other, and so there may be some set way of how to deal with certain diseases or, or certain injuries that you can kind of look mm-hmm. up on a book, but dreams are, are extremely personal. And there's, you know, when I, my association with the International Association for the Study of Dreams, I've met hundreds of, well, dozens of people I've had like deep conversations with and who have different ways of working with their own dreams and with the, their people's dreams, you know, their, their clients' dreams. And there are, there's a huge number of ways of approaching that because there's such a variety of ways mm-hmm. to be human. Sometimes mm-hmm. when I'm talking to people about their dreams, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of like looking through the window to see like, what does the world look like for you? Like, can I, can I get into your head and like look out through your window? Like, cause everybody has a different window that we look through and it all shows up in our dreams and our thoughts and our everyday uh, unconscious expressions. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I think I, I it's it's about one minute early. So I'm just gonna rather than starting off on a new topic because I really want to get to some dream poetry and talk about some your ideas about that. But I don't want I want to have plenty of time for it. So I'm gonna go to our final break, and then we'll Great. come back and we'll talk about the the dream poetry idea, and we'll also take callers. This is the Dream Journal. You're listening to K Squid ninety point seven FM. Community Radio of Santa Cruz, and the phones are now open. If you'd like to call in and talk to me or Yame, you can give us a call. The number is 831-900-5773. Maybe you have your own ways of working with your dreams that you'd like to share or your own lucid dreaming experiences. Remember, one of the numbers on the chart is definitely to share what's up for you because there is something that really deepens our experience to share it with another so we're all dreamers here and we'd love to hear what your experience has been or maybe you have some dream poetry give us a call the number is 831-900-5773 and we will be right back We have a caller on the line. This is the Dream Journal, and I'm going to give the number out, but I want to let you know that both of our lines are busy. So you can give us a call when we finish with this caller, but that number is 831-900-5773. So welcome, caller. (laughs) Hi, Catherine Bell. Oh, I felt a little guilty because this is Ellen, and I called in last week Oh, right. No, Ellen's great. I just want to add something. So I just had to call because I woke up. I thought I woke up this morning. I looked at my clock, which would have been my cell phone because I didn't have my clock in my room at the time. The radio clock. I sometimes move it around and use it during the day. Uh-huh. So I woke up and I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear. Uh-huh. I looked at the clock and it was 11:30, and oh. I thought, oh, I overslept. I can't listen to the dream journal. Oh, no, I'm back to sleep. And then. I got woken up by another distraction, 
And so I had to, but it was a big distraction. I had to jump out of bed. Uh-huh. And I had these really cool dreams. I was in this real, and, and according to your friend, the friend, sorry, the person who is you're talking to you. Who today, is also a friend of I'm mine, sorry, so I just, yes. I just, I just turned it on. I missed your name. Ob, ob, Yame. Yame Wolf Smith. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's according to Yame, and I, she says she lays in bed like 30 seconds uh-huh. to two minutes. Well, I usually lay in bed like five, ten minutes if I have that much time, or at least two to five minutes to just sit and my older sister taught me that when I was like in junior high or even younger just to sit and reflect on my dreams mm. just to go back into the dream state in fact they even heard like if you were sleeping on your right side when you woke up and you had dreams and then you went and moved go back to your right side like I even like just go back to where you were sit and just reflect and if I don't even remember if I don't remember yet what any dreams were my sister taught me to so this is all really good for lucid dreaming yeah. or to remember your dreams. Uh, first, for remembering dreams. She taught me to think about it, just go through things in your life. Was there anything about school? Did I have anything about school? You know, think about where you spend your life. Because usually your dreams are some reflection about where you spend your life. And you even just go through things and say, oh, yeah, it was about something I did at school. And then the whole dream pops in. Ah. So my sister was super cool in teaching me how to remember my dreams when I was young. And I spent... A ton of energy doing that so that when I moved to Santa Cruz right out of high school I got a book on lucid dreaming and I read what it said to do too and it said well you know you get the thing is you know and we talked about that last week you've got to remember you're yeah. dreaming mm-hmm. while you're drinking mm-hmm. to become lucid and and it gave all these different tips and I worked on it so hard I was like 18 19 years old and I became lucid in my dreams because I was so dream focused my entire junior high high school <laughs> I was, and I had been writing down dreams, and so I got really, really, really focused on it and what it told me to do, and what I had decided to do is when I realized I'm dreaming, oh, because I used to have those falling dreams. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a dream book, mm-hmm. that you can use those falling dreams, and I had quite a few when I was younger, and I just, you know, of course, would always wake up from them, because usually that's what you do. You're like, oh, my God, I'm falling, and yeah. you wake up, because it's so terrifying. And they're like, oh, that was the perfect chance for you to become lucid. Uh, you know? Like when you're realize you got to like, when you start feeling yourself falling, realize it's a dream and then fly. Uh, and I worked so hard on that because I had falling dreams at least two or three times a year. Uh, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Uh, and, and so then when this dream, I was, and even can remember, it's so funny. I was like 19 years old, but when I think about it, I remember that particular dream how I was falling, but I was somehow inside this rackety rickety old building (laughs) and i was like and there were other people there and i was like oh yeah i'm falling i'm Uh in a dream now fly and Uh, i did it you remembered and and i remembered and i flew and i remember like oh my god is i can't believe and then that was like i didn't do anything more at the dream you know i was just flying i was like oh my gosh i'm flying i did it i'm losing my dreams and and it was like I had reached some pinnacle, like, okay, I did it. And I never focused on continuing to become lucid in my dreams. Uh, what? So young, <laughs> figured it out, <laughs> was so focused on it, and never did anything. And then, flash forward decades later, I'm in my 50s, this is Rinpoche that used to live here locally, uh, a Rinpoche, wasn't it? Yeah, Tukul Tupden. Uh, and he was talking about dream yoga. Yeah. I was in like a little weekend retreat. And uh-huh. on Friday night, he talked about dream yoga. And I wrote everything down. This is what the Tibetans do. This is what you visualize when you go to sleep. And da, 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 da. And it was really, of course, as Tibetan things are, very involved and detailed and all this stuff, you know. And I went to sleep that night. And he said, tomorrow we'll talk about our dreams. And uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, I really want to talk about my dreams. I love doing this. I go to sleep that night and I go through all that process of how to do the Tibetan thing, and it's really long, and it's really tired, and before I finished, I fell asleep. Mm-hmm. But in the whole reason the Tibetans do it is they're so focused on becoming a bodhisattva, they're like, let's not waste the time that we're sleeping, since we sleep, like, what, what, what percentage of our life, one-third, mm-hmm. or I don't know. So let's use that time that we can focus on, you know, being helping all beings become free from right. suffering. And they also, you know. at my just the Tibetans also view dreaming as a practice of of uh, facing our our uh, the afterlife, like after we die, becoming lucid in the moments when we're passing through bardos oh, after right, we die. Right, that's really important mm-hmm. that they spend their whole life preparing just getting for ready that. for the moment of death. Exactly. exactly. 
So, so there I am in my dream, and I go through the whole process, and I go to and I fall asleep even before the process is through. And I think maybe I woke up and went, "Oh my gosh, I didn't you know." And I would I did it a few times, and then I'm in my dream, and I can remember not specific dream like I just feel like I was on a roller coaster or some other father was there with his kids on the roller coaster and and all of a sudden I was like oh oh I think maybe I fell asleep and then I every time I became lucid it was so weird and I would be like oh this is a dream oh and and he said the whole reason that we want to be at that point become lucid is so that we can help others because that's what the bodhisattva does Mm -hmm. so i remember going like oh my god yes i'm dreaming now and i'd go around to all the other people in my dream you know which Mm -hmm. are really just aspects of myself going what can i do to help you what can i do to help you well it's a good practice like the message that that, that this particular um tuku tuku thing gave me you know what can i do to help you (laughs) interesting it was so funny and kind of like i didn't really i didn't really feel like i used that but, it's, but the fact that he gave me these instructions, and I really love this guy. Like, he is definitely, like, my Tibetan root guru. As I feel. And I went, and I did what he asked, and then the visualizations, and, and I did instantly become lucid. And it was, but it was almost like this silly little kid running around, going, how, how can I serve you? That was it. Right. He's like, we want to keep serving others. <laughs> how can I serve you? <laughs> And I told him the next, and then, then he never asked about the dreams the next day, went through the uh-huh. whole teaching. At the end of the teaching, I raised my hand, and I go, you know, Tuku, you never asked about our dreams last night. <laughs> like, mm. I was just dying all day this year. <laughs> like, I called to you, it's so silly. And the other reason, so the other reason I wanted to just tell you, so I was sharing about some of my lucidity, but I also wanted to share that. And now it's important to just lie there. Like my do- my sister taught me for remembering dreams. Like maybe you don't at first, so just sort of like go through the different aspects of your life. And yeah. See if so- something clicks. But the funny thing is how I literally in my dream was not was thinking about this program again. So <laughs> in my dream, I dreamt that I had looked at the clock and it was too late. Mm-hmm. And then this thing woke me up suddenly. And I was like, wait a minute, it doesn't seem like it's that late outside. And I look at the light and everything, and then I looked at the clock, and it was only like 10 something. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I ter- immediately turned it on. I was uh. too late. Well, how did I get that idea? It was too late. And then I realized that was all in a dream. Uh, yeah. That I was thinking about your program, waiting to look that. at the clock. Some people are dreaming so. about the dream journal. I think that's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I wonder if I was at, at, I I went to the um, Pema Osaling, I think it's called, uh, for yes, Tibetan Dream yes. Yoga Retreat, probably a decade ago now at this point. Right, Pema Osaling, that's Lama Tarchin. It was Lama Tarchin who sponsored the other teacher I'm talking about, Tugu Tuptin, who now goes by Nam Tuptin. Huh. It was Lama Tarchin who sponsored that, the, that amazing Tibetan master to come here. He was quite young when he came here, like 30-something. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of opportunities to to study about uh, dreaming in in the Santa Cruz area. Yeah, May. I wonder if you are you at all familiar with uh, uh, with Tibetan yoga? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah there, there's something about that, that, that their whole culture, is, they've been studying this, or at least, you know, the, the monks make a study of, of the dreaming, so they have a lot of experience with this. Dreaming and be, being lucid in your dreams. So, and the whole point is so that you can continue your practice of becoming a bodhisattva. Right. I've heard, I've heard from numbers of people that actually taking a meditation practice that you do in waking life and then performing that in your dreaming life can be really, really powerful. You just right, get to a right. place of transcendence yeah, very they, quickly. They, they're, they're so, they're, they, I think Tibetan Buddhism is probably, if you want to go into deep studies, psychological studies of the mind, it's probably a great place to go. I mean, I don't, they're, it's amazing that they've been doing this for a long, long time. Yeah. Centuries and centuries. Wow, this I'm going to cool. get off the phone because you got other callers and I felt a little, first I said, is it okay if I call in because I felt bad as I called in last week. Oh. But I thought that was kind of crazy about, the, the thing I really wanted to share was how in my dream, I had realized it was Saturday morning, woke uh-huh. up in my dream, thought I woke up, had thought it was too late to be part of your program. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. That's right, but it wasn't. Then it, then it turned out that you are, you were on time. <laughs> right, right. Uh-huh. And, well, and I did have, and I did have dream, you know, I remember Summer Rose, you probably know her, in my dream, and mm-hmm. I did have a dream like usual with lots of people, and tra- I haven't tra- traveled a lot in the past, 
and I have a ton of traveling dreams. And in my dream, I was traveling. Yeah. And we're like, where are we going to go next? And I was like, let's go to the sunshine, go <laughs> to the soul in Spain. You know, I was already deciding where I was going to go travel in my dream. And yeah, I need to become more lucid again so I can right. start really enjoy well, you know, the this fact com- that I'm not being able to physically travel. At least I can go go off and we can all go off and travel in our right. dreams. Well, this conversation may help. And, you know, yeah, May's been mentioning about books. And I've been wanting to ask you, May, actually, what are some of your favorite books that inspire? Okay, I'm- I'm, I'm hanging up so you can take another call. Okay, thank you, Ellen. Well, I'm so glad you called, and I'm glad it wasn't too late for you. <laughs> All right, take Bye care. Now. So Ellen's uh, hanging out with the phone, so that means now the uh, the lines are now open. So if you want to call in, 831-900-5773, you're welcome to give us a call, and we'll get you on the air. So, Yame, I'm wondering, like, what, uh, are there any, actually, you know what, let's just go. we got books we can recommend, and then... There's also the dream poetry. Where do we want to go? What's what's your what's the, where are you at, Yame? <laughs> oh, hmm. well, actually, I was I just felt inspired to share a little tidbit about what Ellen was saying yeah. about um, memory, and that was um, another tip, but wasn't part of my process. Oh yeah, great. Kind of more just an outside tip is um, um, for anyone who this applies to all types of dreams, whether it's lucid or regular therapy or whatever, um, is, yeah, cultivating one's memory. That's really, really important. Um, and I think that's what, because um, kids, I feel like the kid-like, child-like state, they remember everything. Mm. But grown up cannot get away with anything. And so <laughs> I've always had a really good memory. Um, and so... Um, one of the things that I would do is um, there's this man named Jim Quick who is um, a learning specialist and he changed my life and he has all these tips and tricks around um, retaining retention and and memory Hmm. and so that's super 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 core Um, if anything like anyone takes away anything from what I say Uh, cultivating one's memory right okay Uh, that's that is super important I love that so we do have another caller on the line I love this a little why don't you say hello caller what's your name where are you calling from Um, this is Jeff and I'm calling from Santa Cruz hey Jeff well this is great this is (laughs) my dear friend Jeff and Yame Uh, actually while you're on the line Jeff I'm going to just jump right in and say that Jeff and Yame have a monthly dream group meetup which is the second Wednesday of every month at the the Dream Crib. And uh, it's a group that I really love. It's a networking group where we get to talk about dreams. And I highly recommend it. So you might want to join the group, get on the mailing list, and find out about the events that they have because it's a a really fun group. Mm -hmm. Definitely appreciate the plug. We're we're also going to be looking – actually, we're going to be looking at uh, doing an online online Zoom dream group – meeting meeting at, in addition to the in-person meeting um probably maybe starting august right so we're going to be adding an additional piece but the reason why i wanted to call is i wanted to say for yame I, I thought your explanation of your entire dream your approach to dream was entirely beautifully beautifully said and it's mm-hmm. uh, inspiring to me um to hear your approach and, and taking aspects of it how you approach dreaming and lucid dreaming and incorporating some of those techniques into my own dream process. So I just wanted to say, say thank you for sharing that. Yep. I second that. Thank you, Yame. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. That's it. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's just inspiring that you really can can uh, create this whole process and that you find that dreaming is so rewarding that you, you put a lot of thought and, and energy into that. And I think that's really inspiring. <laughs> take it in, Yame. Yeah, just take a breath. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, Jeff, is there anything you, else you want to share on the phone? I, I love having you call in. It's it's always great to talk to you. This is, uh, Jeff Wallace, he, he actually was a guest on the Dream Journal back in the fall, so you can find that in our archives on on, uh, on podcast land. Jeff Wallace, Jeffrey Wallace. Oh, he may have hung up already. Maybe that was all he had to say. He was just wanted to say uh, thank you for your process. <laughs> oh, but I hear the phone ringing again. This is awesome. We're getting... I think we opened the floodgates last week when we had our all-caller show, which is wonderful. 
So yeah, the Dream Crib Meetup is wonderful. I think it, you can find it on uh, on the Meetup, you know, the Meetup uh, app or web page, whatever it's called. And it's called what's it called? Santa Cruz Dreamers or something? Santa Cruz? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what the name of? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Santa Cruz Dream Meetup. Ah, Santa Cruz Dream Meetup. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a false alarm phone call. So it's you and me. <laughs> so we have about six minutes left in the show, and I, I wonder if maybe now's a good time to talk a little bit about dream poetry. Sure. Mm, yeah. I, I feel like, do I have time to share? I have two that I could share, or just one, okay. I think, for time. Oh, we have, uh, we have a good you know, five, five or six minutes. Well, let's just do one and then see how it goes. How about that? Cool. Then um, I... Okay, cool. Uh, I could share, I have one poem um, that I wrote about like a couple months ago, and I dreamt of an eagle, um, well, giving me wings, its mm. wings, and um, and then I was, I had to go pee, and so I, I woke up to go pee, and then I came up, and I was, I just was in that state, I don't know that... I don't know if there's a name for it, where it was almost like I was still buzzing from the dream state mm. in my waking mm. life. Um, they call it flow state, I guess. Mm. Um, athletes have this um, experience this when they're just really in the moment, or dancers. But I was doing that with dreaming. Um, and I was awake, and so I just started writing this poem that was inspired by this dream that I had. Um, writing it at like 2 a.m. in the morning mm -hmm. and it's called uh, Spirit of the ABCs to Z and um, I'll read it right here. I'm sorry, can you say the name, uh, name again? Spirit of the... ABCs to Z. To Z, ah. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, absolute awe of my aliveness again and again, blissfully being caring and committed, dancing with divine destiny. Enjoying the exciting energy everywhere, fearless in freedom, grateful for God's grace, having health, happiness, and hope ignited inside, joyful, jolly, juicy jewel, kind is the new cool or cool, live, love, laughter, light, may mystery be met with mighty, merry, and mirth, naked now, never-ending newness, opening, open, opening, open. Passionately, purposely partying. Quality is queen. Remembering reality, really. Surrendering to serenity. Thriving throughout the todays and tomorrows. Unfolding, unfurling, unwinding. Vividly vivacious. Welcoming and wooing the world with my wild woo-woo ways. XO, XO, XO. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're yummy. Thing with Zeus. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yummy. You're yummy. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. The way it all, it all flows flows through the alphabet. So this, this structure, but no mm -hmm. structure. So he does. You know, that's the thing. You don't need to be like Doctor Zeus and have some kind of strict rhythm rhyme scheme. But just the the feelings, the feelings that it evokes. That's what poetry is yeah. all about for me. Is the feelings that they evoke. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, how, so you, you say you started writing this at two o'clock in the morning. Do you have any mm -hmm. um, any suggestions of like how we can get into the zone and mm. create the poetry? Sure. I mean, how do I? I intentionally. This is a funny trick. I mean, um, yeah. I drink uh, a ton of water at night. And so I pee at least, wake up to go pee at, um, or at least like four or five times a night. And so, you know, part of being in this state is if I'm lucky, um, if I have a lucid dream in the middle of the night, I'll, um, that, that feeling of elated kind of just flow state, will I'll wake up with that. And so if you can um, wake up when you're in that state, it, it's just, Kind of the gates are open to mm. all creativity um mm. and so i think uh some people think oh when i'm sleeping it's for pure rest 
I think it's for rest. It can be for creativity.、Mm-hmm. It can be for integration. There's all these different states you can be in. And so knowing ones、um, also just their kind of like bio rhythms at night,、um, you know, when they're in REM sleep, when they're in kind of phase one or two or three or four,、right. it's really important. And so educating oneself on the fa- their phases and when their internal clock system is working, that helps for.、Um, Opening the portal to creativity.、Mm. I love that. Yeah, I've, I've read some studies about creativity and dreaming, and certainly there's lots of stories of people who have created some amazing things based on their dreams, and some of it's art and poetry, and some of it is like the sewing machines or the benzene molecule and the periodic table. So it can apply on a, on a creative front and also on a more scientific front. So,、mm-hmm. so Yame,、mm-hmm. how can our listeners get in touch with you in case they want to want to chat some more or join the the Santa Cruz Dreamers Meetup? Yeah, you.、Um, if anyone is interested in connecting with me,、um, I can give my email out here. Sure. Uh, my e- uh, my email is yummy y u m m y thirty forty two at gmail dot com.、Um, And I can add you to、uh, also our email list, which I send out、um, once a month to update people on what we're doing. Right. Well, thank you, Yame. This really has been a delight. I'm so glad that you came on here, and I hope you have a fabulous rest of the day and some wonderful lucid dreams tonight. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Catherine. <laughs> Such a pleasure. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. So, next week we will be talking to David Lowe, who has a counseling practice in Philadelphia where he specializes in mindful recovering and customized meditation, but most of all, dream work. We'll talk about why most people have such a lack of interest in their dreams and about how that interest is now being forced upon us by world events. So, tune in live next Saturday at 10 a.m. or catch the podcast replay on all your fine purveyors of podcasts. I am Catherine Bell, and this has been the Dream Journal. Thanks for listening. You can find out more about my dream coaching practice at experientialdreamwork.com. I offer private sessions, dream groups, and online classes. If you have a dream you're curious about, you're welcome to contact me for a free introductory dream consultation. You can also reach me at Catherine at Casequid.org. That's K A T H E R I N E at K S Q D dot O R G. And let me know if you have any suggestions for the show. Please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or tell a friend about the show. And it really helps people find it. Our guest today was Yame Wolf Smith. And I'd also like to thank my program assistant, Max Deaton, and our creative musician, Rick Kleffel, who created an original composition for our ambient music again today. And our thanks to our Collins from Ellen and Jeff. Collins really do make the show exciting. And thank you so much to all the generous donors who support this station. We really rely on listener donations, and you can always make a donation at ksqd.org. A couple bucks here or there, maybe make a monthly. Contribution every little bit helps. We're all volunteers here bringing the best of Santa Cruz to you. That is all for the Dream Journal. So join us again next Saturday at 10 a.m. And when you wake up tomorrow morning, take a minute to look within. Do you remember a dream? Write it down and bring it to the next Dream Journal. I am Catherine Bell, and you are listening to KSQD Santa Cruz.